So how many of you have a wearable like a smartwatch or a earbud? Let's raise hands. Quite a few, right? And how many of you or people you know suffer from heart problems or diabetes and have to rely on pacemakers or insulin pumps to live their daily lives? Again, quite a few. These connected consumer and medical devices are increasing in popularity as a part of the Internet of Things or IoT revolution. But these devices share a common distinguishing feature that all of them are around your body and they share a common medium that is your body itself. This subset of devices is creating what is called the Internet of Body or IOB. But because these devices are on our body and often have control to our important bodily functions and our private data, the natural question that comes to mind is, are these secure? Former US Vice President Dick Cheney asked his doctors to disable all communication to his pacemaker because of a scare that a remote hack can disable uh, or enable heart attack. He was influenced by the Broken Hearts episode of the Homeland TV series in late 2012, where the same attack was shown leading to the death of the vice president. But now, are these attacks real? It sounds good in stories. Turns out, the famous hacker Barnaby Jack showed through a series of live demonstration in an audience like this at RSA conference, which is the premier security conference, as well as other places, that using a high gain antenna, he can intercept the communication of the pacemaker or insulin pump and increase the dosage of the insulin pump to lethal limits. So these vulnerabilities are real and they exist even today. These are notices from Department of Homeland Security and FDA. This, even this year, in March and June, talking about these radio communication vulnerabilities in pacemakers and insulin pumps, leading to recalls of many devices. And even today, many of us have some of these devices which are vulnerable. Since that is the truth, let us try to understand why this vulnerability exists. Imagine I'm trying to communicate something from my smartwatch to my connected pacemaker. What we do is we take the information, put it onto an electromagnetic carrier, which then emanates outside my body, goes all around us in the room, and only a fraction of it is picked up in my pacemaker, which is intended. And the rest of the energy is available anywhere in the room for some hacker to pick up and try to intercept. So just by how the fundamental nature of radio communication works, the signal is available to everybody. So I'm here to tell you how can we secure it in the future. But before that, let me start from where it all started. I grew up as a very curious kid, making and breaking things. <laughs> from alarm clocks to doorbells and dissecting frogs way before my time it was due in school. <laughs> At the juncture, after my graduation from high school, I got into the top medical and engineering college in my state, and I had to choose. I didn't really want to choose. I wanted to do both because I loved both. But in India, in front of a, a 5,000 audience, I tried to convince a panel that I want to do simultaneously both things. They smiled at me, and I had to choose. I chose engineering. But I kept the desire that at some point when I have the freedom, I want to combine and work on both. The next phase of my life took me halfway across the world to Atlanta, Georgia for my PhD, where I worked on wireless systems. And as I was diving deep into them, I realized wireless is beautiful through the radio communication because it is ubiquitous connectivity that is enabling today's IoT revolution and making lives better. But because of the same reason, the signals are available to everybody and can be hacked. 
the next five years of my life took me to Intel Labs in Hillsboro, Oregon, where I was working on USB-C type and other wired communication links. When you communicate through a wire, the signals mostly stay contained within the wire, making it physically secure. Also, because the inner signals don't leak out, it is 100 to 1,000 takes more efficient. But you need that physical medium. The next phase of my life, I moved to here in the Midwest, Indiana, at Purdue University as a faculty. And I was sitting on this realization of the differences between wireless and wired communication, and my secret love of trying to combine engineering and medical, and had the freedom to explore new topics. So I was looking for something exciting to work on, and I went to a conference, and as I was shaking hands with my fellow peers and exchanging a business card right after that, it occurred to me, why can I not just send the business card through our bodies when the hands are being shaken? Or, in other words, can we use the body as a wear to communicate? And it will then be secure and efficient. So we went on this voyage with my students, some of who are sitting here, to try to understand this. And we tried to model the body and the devices around it and the intricate nature of interaction among themselves. And with a, as we started building deeper understanding, we figured that the human body can be modeled as a circuit. And once you have that kind of understanding, you can make it work in a very interesting region. On the right side, you see the electromagnetic region, where is the radio waves we use for communication. This is our Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. But here, the signals are all around us. On the left side, there exists another region called the electroquasi-static region, where the signals stay contained within the body so it doesn't leak. So it gives you physical security. But prior to our work, the loss was very high, which means the received signal in this secure region was very low, making it unusable. Using the deep understanding that we developed of the human body as a circuit, we came up with a new way through which the loss can be reduced by 100x, making this physically secure region usable for the first time. What does that mean? Imagine the lady on the right is using this radio wave for communication, and her signals are available everywhere around us. It can be hacked in a Starbucks scale size, or even with a high gain antenna, it can be hacked in such a big room like today's conference room. However, if the body is used as a wire, as the boy is doing on the left, the signal is shown by the green aura. It stays within less than one centimeter off of the body's surface. So nobody in the room has your private information and can hack into your devices. So with that signal confinement understanding, we started building demos to see what can we do with this. I'm going to show you three demos where using this device that we have designed, we are combining the signal, we are putting the signal on our body and that it stays on our body. Then my students, once they touch a computer, the password goes through the body and it opens a computer. In the second demo, we'll show continuous signal transfer through the body and corresponding to that information, different images pulling up. And in the third demo, we'll show that when you lift the hand a little bit, the signal don't pass, showing the signal confinement or the security properties. Let's see. The first demonstration is an illustration of authentication using human body communication. The user sends unique codes from the wearable on the left to the device on the table. The transmitted red code sent by the user does not unlock the computer. The correct password, the blue code, successfully unlocks the computer. After unlocking, the second demonstration show image information being sent from the device to the laptop, commanding the loading of each corresponding image. This highlights potential applications in personalized electronic interfaces. Next, the user demonstrates the signal confinement within the human body by lifting his finger above the electrode, showing minimal leakage from the body. Notice the corresponding images are no longer pulling up. Finally, the user places his finger down onto the device, completing the circuit to initiate the image loading once again. So, we have shown that 
using the body as a wire, it is secure and the signals are content. But the benefits doesn't stop there because the signal energy is not leaking out and because we don't have to generate these high frequency signals, the communication energy is 100x lower than today's Bluetooth communication, which means your battery can be tiny or your battery life can be much longer. Imagine the benefits when you're connected pacemaker because its battery runs longer, you don't have to have surgery that often. Won't that be nice? So as of now, I have shown you that using the body as a wire gives us the insight that we can have secure and efficient communication. What does it mean for our future? The future of healthcare is connected and personalized. There will be many devices ar around our body which picks us our physiological signals communicate it through the body itself to a body-owned hub like this watch, which then secures it and sends it to a remote cloud for remote monitoring or supervision by a doctor. Bioelectronic medicine uses tiny amount of electrical signals to replace drugs and provide disease cure without the side effects. These devices when you make them closed loop using machine learning and AI for analysis and then providing the feed person specific feedback to the devices for actuation, it becomes person specific and much more accurate. So for close, getting the data out and getting the data back, we need a secure communication link for the future of healthcare and the body as a word is the most promising technique for that. Our future consumer devices will range from smart rings to smart eyeglasses, to smart tattoos. Replacing the Bluetooth in there with the, the body wear will give, not only give us security, but increase their battery life from hours to days. I have already showed you that the signal can be confined on the fingertip, which means communication can be enabled strictly by touch. Think of the implications. I can open doors just by touching them. I can open computers. I can exchange business cards by shaking hands. Or even better, I can touch a conductive surface, collect information, keep it on me, and then go and touch something else and transfer the file. <laughs> right? In the long term, people are talking about brain-machine interfaces for augmented human performance, which needs a lot of data transfer from the brain to the outside. And since there exists a medium, using the medium as a wire, makes it much more secure and efficient instead of trying wireless around it. So in summary, we have shown that using the body as a wire gives us secure and efficient communication. So I want to leave you with one thought. If that is so, why should we take our private information, put it on radio waves, and communicate to everybody else around such, and interfere with them and make it susceptible to hacking. Thank you.